Hello, badminton fans, and welcome to this leaning 3D caliber 600 combat badminton racket review. Right, let's start with availability of this racket. So, um, there is very little supply of this racket within UK and Europe. We will be selling it at our racket sale site at wwwbadminton racket review dot com the prices we've seen in leaning asia are around 140 130 pounds we're selling this racket for 95 pounds which is an absolute bargain um, so if you're interested in it head over to the racket sell site if there's no stock left email us or it should be available on back order on a seven day lead time into europe right um, let's talk about the racket specs and compare them to our own E-Zone specifications to give you an idea of how this racket stacks up. Overall weight of the racket, 86 plus minus 3 grams and the racket E-Zone testing shows this racket to weigh 90.7 grams and that is with the Yonex BG65 string in place and the grip supplied by Leaning. The balance of this racket is 300 so leaning towards the head of the racket uh, 300 plus or minus 4 mil. The badminton racket review easily shows this racket to be quite head heavy, so 317 mil, so going significantly towards the head there. Okay, the shaft stiffness of this racket, oh my goodness me, is medium flex. It's a medium flex, actually, yeah, it's not bad. Medium flex racket. And the badminton racket review E-Zone shaft stiffness test shows it to have a flexible shaft. Um, what else do we need to know? Maximum string tension on this racket is 30 pounds. And it's a TB Nano stabilized torsion angle, aerotech beam system, dynamic optimum frame. Not sure what any of that means, if I'm honest with you. Um, this racket is made of carbon fiber and it's produced in China. Okay, I think that gives you a very good rundown of the overall specification of the racket. Doesn't give me a grip size, so I'm suspecting G4, G5. Um, what do we think of the design? Well, um, obviously in Asia, this is deemed as a premium racket, but I have to say the paint job is pretty dull I mean, high quality really well finished really precise um, really you can see the manufacturing process is really high standard but um, just not very interesting to me um, but that's no right or wrong I mean either you like it or you don't it's up to you it's personal choice there's no your choice is better than my choice or whatever not it's just a personal choice I just don't find it a very interesting design take a look at this close-up uh, at these close-up images and see what you think of the design for yourself. Okay, specifications are done. Let's go to the E zone. Okay, so before we start our E zone testing, what do you need to know about how we test our rackets? Well, first of all, we use the same shuttles, the Yonix AS30s on all tests. We string, restring all of the rackets with Yonex BG65 at 25 pounds tension. And it's the same player taking all of the shots. Right, now you have some basic understanding of how we test. Let's move on to the smash test. The smash shot that you're seeing here and for all of the rackets we've tested within Badminton Racket Reviews E-Zone, uh, we take generally six shots. We take the two highest uh, 
racket uh, shuttle speeds and we average those to give us a uh, overall speed if those two uh, if those two readings are not within a certain percentage of each other we then retake the entire test this shot measures the shuttle speed uh, coming off the racket head and also if you go across to the E zone you'll see a picture similar to the one you're looking at on the screen now which accompanies every single racket within the E zone so that's nearly 650 or more rackets with this kind of smash JPEG showing you the racket head speed, the shuttle speed, the distance and the approximate repulsion of the racket. Okay, now we're going to do an E-Zone maneuver test. The maneuver shots was designed to tell us about the racket's acceleration abilities, its ability to shift from one direction to the other or shift quickly from nothing to full speed. It also tests the racket's um, aerodynamics. In this test, the player is sitting still with the racket and once the shuttle is fired, which we, and we measure the shuttle speed to ensure we have uh, consistency within the tests so it's coming at the same speed all the time or roughly the same speed as, as, as much as we can control anyway um, and then the player reacts once the shuttle is fired to hit the shuttle and we are measuring the head speed of the racket during that test Okay, so they're done. Now it's E-Zone control test time. The control test is a simplistic test. We've thought many, many times if there was any other better way of creating a test where we, we are uh, looking, focusing on the control of the racket and able to score it, and we so far haven't come up with anything better. So this, con this control test is essentially a test where we have 14 shots taken you're not seeing all the shots um, on the control video we, we generally film half or less of the shots taken the green bucket here scores maximum the gray scores slightly less and anything in the net or out scores nothing at all <laughs> So you've seen all of the E-Zone testing, you understand how the E-Zone testing works, what the parameters of our testing is like now, so what is our conclusion of this racket? Well, this racket, unlike a lot of the 3D calibers, doesn't have any specifically amazing um, skill set. It is okay. Um, in most areas, it's reasonably quick in the air it offers a okay smash not a killer smash it offers okay control um, so I think that once what I would say is this racket is a kind of racket that if you spend time with it and you try to get to understand its timing understand how it works I think it will start to serve you okay uh, I'm just looking um, at the on court test results here so yeah I think you know there is the possibility of being able to get the timing right and actually hitting a reasonably good smash with this racket but I do think that will take some time and I don't think it has a bigger sweet spot um, 
in terms of control again if you just understand the balance of it the timing of it you will manage to get decent tight control out of the racket this is from my own experience of using it also i think it offers reasonably good repulsion where it isn't great is um it's not great at the fast exchanges where you need speed on your side i don't think it's brilliant in those areas it could be better so where does that leave us i would say that if you're a leaning fan it's difficult to recommend the racket if i'm honest with you um 3d caliber 001 costs half the price of this and is better and even that you know it, I, I would say i would say this sits in the middle of the 3d caliber 001 or the 3d caliber 900i which is 150 pounds and i would do one of those two as opposed to this um yeah that would be my advice do don't buy this racket it's an okay racket and in time it will perform reasonably well but it's going to take a little bit of time and training and practice to get used to it that's what i believe however why go through that and why spend nearly 100 pounds when you can get the 3d caliber 001 for 55 pounds uh from our shop again or you can step up to uh, the Liliana Natsia 3D Caliber 900i at £150 and get the top of the range racket. Both those rackets are better than this racket. So that is my recommendation. Step down or step up, no point going in the middle. Um, if you're insistent that this is the one you want, then like I said, you're gonna to need to take some time and I think it will actually turn out to be an okay racket to use and you will get used to it and enjoy it. However, I've already said the rest. You can step down or step up and get better performance. If you're a user of this racket and you're an E-Zone member, leave a review on the E-Zone. Thousands of people visit the E-Zone every month. Please build a community there and let other people um, share and understand and read about your experiences. Also, if you're not an EZO member, don't have a clue what the EZO is, then there will be a video tour following this video of the EZO to give you a better understanding of it. If you're not an EZO member and you're using this racket, leave a review on any of our social platforms. So uh, Instagram, Facebook or YouTube are, are our primary places where we have a decent level of membership. Uh, a decent level of following leave a review on any of those platforms at least other people get to read what you thought of the racket and sometimes uh, we know from the data people may not like comment or reply to your uh, reviews that you leave and the comments you leave but people do read them so please do encourage that it's really good of you outside of that um, i think in terms of the racket i'm done here stay tuned if you want to see more about the ease e-zone before you go, we want to just extend our thanks and gratitude for the support, for the constructive criticism, for the um, acknowledgement, for how you have helped promote Badminton Racket Review across the world, the shares, the likes, really appreciated. Please do keep up that good work. We will keep up the work from our side. Really appreciate your support. Thanks again. See you on the next video.